Well, hello, everybody. This is Executive Life Coach Victoria Scott, and I wanted to welcome you to day three of Taking Back Your Personal Power. And I just wanted to say real quick that these videos are short and form uh, right here for your convenience. But if you would want um, extra more time with me and maybe some clarity on some of the things that I am sharing, you're welcome to visit my website, victoriamscott.com, victoriamscott.com, where I'll be sending up uh, some appointments for you to meet with me and to, you know, for us to talk about some things that you need clarity on. And so I will be putting that up for you for your convenience. Uh, before the week is up. So please be sure to check my site at the end of the week if you're following me on YouTube. And we'll be able to schedule a session where we can talk about what I am sharing. If you want to find out more goals and more ways and strategies to take back your personal power, I want more clarity on the things that I am sharing. I'm happy to have one-on-one -on -one sessions with you. So I am so grateful for join that you are able to join me on day three. Thank you for joining me on day one and day two. I hope that they have been empowering to you. Please share. If they are encouraging to you and empowering to you, please share them with other people who need to, uh, to have a word of encouragement come to them, to bless them of edification to build them up and to help them keep going. I know there's also admonishment in there. So please admonishing in there. If you are, you know, um, if this is blessing you bless others by sharing as well. So without further ado, I want to get into today's topic. Today, we're talking about the importance of having the right attitude. So uh, today's topic is attitude adjustment. It is very, very important for us to uh, have the right attitude with whatever it is that we are facing. The children of Israel, whenever they were leaving Egypt, the, the first group that left Egypt, um, you know, was stuck in the wilderness for 40 years. That was only supposed to have been an, an 11 day trip, less than two weeks, but it took them 40 years to get out of that place because of their attitude. An attitude not just in our lip service and what we say outwardly. You know, we it's great to say, God bless you, and it's great to say, praise the Lord and glory be to God. But if our heart and our mind is so far away from meaning that, we're not walking in the right attitude and we're not walking in humility. The posture of our mind before God is absolutely important. And I don't want people to, to, to see people bound in, 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 in their wilderness year after year and year after year, all because of this thing of, of having the wrong attitude. So I'm here today to speak about that. So that, cause I want to see you cross over to the other side. I want you to, I want to see you excel in the, in the endeavors that God has called you to pursue this year. I want you to see, I want to see you, um, live long in your breakthrough. And so with that, our, our attitude is important. So, so they were stuck in that place. They were complaining. They were murmuring, you know, in God told them to do something and they spent more time doubting God and fighting God than actually doing what God had called them to do. So it's really important that we understand that the attitude of our mind is that when God tells us to do something, that we are operating in obedience, that when we don't understand to seek clarity from him. And when, if God doesn't give the clarity to trust that God knows what he's doing and why he's doing. So to take this step forward, I was working with my son, my oldest son on his homework, and he's an intelligent little boy, very, very bright. But when he came to math, he was, he seemed to be having a lot of trouble with subtraction. He was doing great with everything else. He can do addition like crazy, but he was having trouble with subtraction. And, and, and after, you know, seeing just after sessions of teaching him and showing him different ways, singing songs, excuse me, getting material, he just was not grasping it. And I asked the Lord, I said, God, what is going on? And he said, talk to him about his attitude and also about his confidence. And so I began to talk to him about his attitude and just letting him know that sometimes, you know, um, Things might not go the way we want them to go. Things might be inconveniencing. They, they might be a little bit challenging. They might be hard. They might be taking us out of our comfort zone. But when our attitude is, God, I trust you. God, I believe in you. God, help me. I'm going to trust that this is for my benefit. Your attitude begins to change. And then also we talked about 
confidence. And what confidence does for you is that sometimes we doubt ourselves or sometimes we've been made to feel like our efforts are not good enough. We've been crushed in certain areas. So because our confidence is shot, our attitude is shot. So when our attitude is shot, our confidence is shot. shot. And it's this vicious, vicious, vicious cycle. And so I noticed that when I addressed that with him, Oh my goodness, he got an A in on his math test that included a major amount of subtraction. Homework was done in no amount of time and it was accurate. So God, you know, using that, the Lord was saying that a lot of my people are like that. There's a lot of you whose confidence has been shot. You've been told certain things that make you doubt whether what you're doing is good enough or not, whether it counts or not, whether there's any value to it, which is therefore then uh, leads to which therefore then leads to affecting your attitude and how you, how you feel about things that challenge you and how, and, 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 and your mannerisms towards that. What God is saying, listen to me this year, he's saying, have confidence in who you are. Have confidence that even if you get things wrong, God is not, you know, there to tear you apart. He's there to lift you up and to build you and to say, come on, let's try again. Your attitude should be that way. You know that, you know what, when you're going through circumstances that are not the greatest, listen, God is right there with you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, their attitude was, listen, if, if, if God doesn't save us from this fire that you're about to throw us in, because we're not bowing down to you, they said he'll still be God. He will still be God, whether he saves us or not. I love that attitude. And I remember when I started to learn to pray that how much my life began to change, whether it's like, Lord, I know what I would love to happen, but if it doesn't happen that way, God, you are still God. You are still awesome. You are still powerful. And sometimes we get discouraged when things don't go our way. So I want to encourage you this year. That if God is saying to you, this is not happening, you know, right now, I, I want you to have the attitude that trusts God, that loves God. Study Galatians 5, 22 and 23, which talks about temperate, uh, uh, temperate, our temperate temperament, I'm sorry, our character, which is what you find in that verse that says that we have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, of love and a sound mind. That sound mind is your temperance, your, your character. Okay. The, you, you don't, Pray for patience. You are patient. You work with patience. You don't pray to be loving. You are, you should be loving, flowing in love, flowing in meekness, flowing in self-control. All of those things should be part of our lives that we are, um, that are like second nature to us, obviously growing in them, but they're second nature to us. God wants us to have the right attitude with him, to trust him and to say, God, you know what? Even though there is a storm and there is a flood, you are the king of the flood. Oh my goodness. That is so powerful to me. He is the king of the flood. And so therefore, I believe that as this year is the year that we walk on water, that we, when we walk on the storms, like Peter did when he asked Jesus and he says, bid me come. He saw Jesus doing it. Therefore, he knew he could do it. Those circumstances that are coming at you and telling you, you know what, there's no way, no matter what's going to happen. If you see Jesus walking on that water, you walk on that flood too. You walk on that, you walk on that storm too. He has given you the ability to do so. I want to empower you with that. I want to encourage you and to tell you that I'm praying for you and to let you know that no matter where you find yourself this year, when you have the right attitude, it determines, it determines your level of thinking. It determines the outcome, outcome of the quality of your life. And God died Jesus died to give you the absolute best quality of your life. Things may not always be comfortable or going the way that you are, but when you are resting in Shalom and your, your mind is in the posture of worshiping God and honoring him for the God that he is, the one who's been from everlasting to everlasting, who holds the universe in his hand, study the universe and see how grand it is. He holds that in his hand and he's holding you. I love you. I'm praying for you and I'll see you tomorrow.